up, M Squad? Welcome back to the channel. Today, you guys, it's going to be another story time. This is going to be something totally different. A story time that some people do know that's close to me, and there's a lot of people that don't know. Okay, so welcome to the channel. If you are new, welcome. And to my faithful supporters, I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you, thank you so much for rocking with your girl. And if you're not following me, I don't know what you're doing. Just hit that little red subscribe button over there to the right side of you. Click, click. Make sure you turn on your post notification bell to all so you'll be notified when I upload new content to the channel, okay? Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And leave a comment or two as well. Make sure you follow all of my social media platforms. They are listed in the description box down below of this video. Okay, so today's story time, you guys, it was inspired by another content creator. Her name is Tawana Yvette Ray. Make sure you guys go and follow her on her social media platforms. Uh, it's just like this particular topic, it touches home for me. And I'm pretty sure once I get into this video, once I get to begin to talk about what um, my story time is going to be um, with about, I'm pretty sure there are a lot of others that can relate to this particular subject. My story time is a pastor made a pass at me. I'm pretty sure y'all can relate. For the past couple of years, I'm not sure if y'all not have been paying attention. There been there has been so many pastors been exposed for all the foolishness and the wickedness they have done behind closed doors. And it's coming to light. The Most High is a uncovering a lot of these wicked pastors out here doing behind closed doors. And I'm so glad. Because a lot of them have been hiding behind the pulpit. A lot of them behind and behind the cloth, per se. And it's about time. Because they are scattering in their sh God's sheep. And he ain't pleased at all. And basically, my story time is my ex-sister-in-law. Um... We all went to the same church. I've been going to this church ever since I was like, what, 17, 17 years old. I've been going to this church up until I had my first daughter. I was going there up until I was like 23, I want to say, 23. Yeah, up until I turned 23, 24 years old. And I'm glad that I left. So, um, after I had my first daughter, me and her father, that's a whole different story. Um, we separated and, um, I was living in a house by myself, you know, just lonely and all that stuff. And he was out doing what he was doing. And, um, right before I had my daughter, I moved back with my mom. Because I stayed sick during the entire pregnancy. I was sick from the time that I found out I was pregnant pregnant with her up until I had her. Up until the day that I had her. You guys. And I got so many stories about that particular situation. But we're going to get into this story time. Um, I stayed sick. I stayed in and out the doctor's office. I stayed in and out the hospital. It was just a bunch of mess. So anyway, I um, moved in with my mom and I had my daughter at the time. So I'm not recording on my camera. I'm actually recording on um, our PC. And um, this particular day, my sister-in-law had reached out to me. She wanted me to do her hair. So I did like a, um, not a sew in, but I like glue tracks in her hair. Um, that's what I did back in the days. I don't know how to 
so no hair now, but I knew. <laughs> Give me some super glue. I'm not super glue. Cut. <laughs> um, let me see. Give me some, um, give me some, um, wig glue and I know how to glue them tracks in. So she called me up, um, it was like early mid morning. She called me up. She wanted me, she was going to come and pick me up and she wanted me to do her hair. So, um, we went to the beauty supply store. I got everything that she needed, but prior to, cause she lived on the west side of Charlotte and um, we lived on the northeast side of Charlotte. So she came and got me. Prior to her coming to get me, um, my mom was at the house. Thank God my mom was at the house because my mom got to see all the foolishness that was going on. So I showed her immediately. So prior to um, my sister-in-law coming to pick me up, her husband had texted me and I was like, I'm up there thinking when I seen the message, I'm up there thinking like, okay, well, he's not able to reach his wife. Tell her to have me to call her. So when I opened the message, it was totally different. He made a pass at me saying that I look beautiful. And he wants to talk to me. And I was immediately taken back by this. Now, he's supposed to be our pastor of our church one of the pastors of our church because we had several we had a bishop we had um we had two bishops in um in our church so i'm up there thinking like but what are we doing here like you knew that me and my daughter father was married at the time even though we were separated i was still legally married you're married with children six kids and you're supposed to be a pastor number one. You're supposed to be so-called pastor number one of our church. What are you doing? So I was taken back. So I messaged him. I said, number one, you're supposed to be a pastor. And you're married. And you're messaging me this type of foolishness. I, I told him, I immediately tested him. I said, God is not pleased. And I said, I will let your wife know. I'm not going to delete anything. And I immediately showed my mom. I told my mama right away. And I waited good till his wife came there. And I immediately showed her the messages that her husband sent. I said, I'm not deleting anything. I was pissed off, you guys. So she had her children in the car with me. I had my daughter um, <clears throat> with me. But they had like a three-seater type Jeep. And my niece was there too. So I went over her house. Her husband was at work at the time. I went over her house. I did her hair. It took so long because we was doing other stuff. So she had to go pick him up for work. I wanted to go straight home. Because I told her, I said, now if I see him, it's going to be a problem. Like I'm literally going to cuss him out and we're going to be fighting. For real. So she went to go pick him up anyway because she had to go pick him up. They only had one car and it was getting late, so she had to go pick him up for work. As soon as she picked him up for work, we got down the street good. I went off on him. I cussed him out like 40 going north, okay? I went off on him. I went off on him from the time she picked him up until they got to the house. And when they got to the house, that's when I started swinging. It took him, it took his wife, my niece, God rest her soul, Lord Jesus. I miss my niece so much. I've been in her life for ever since I was 17 years old. I miss her so, so, so much. And I don't want to cry on him. But it took my niece, his wife, and my mother-in-law at the time. I forgot my mother-in-law was in a car too. It took all three of them to hold me back from not jumping on him. So I told my husband at the time, my ex-husband at the time. And he was working that night. So my husband at the time um, got off of work. He came to the house. Meanwhile, the pastor... <clears throat> which was my brother-in-law because my husband at the time was uh, his sisters with his wife. 
So he ran up in the house. He locked himself in the in the bedroom. My husband at the time, he and my ex husband at the time, he had his gun on him. He was packing. So he came to confront him. Like, what are you doing? And it's crazy that as the years go on, you start seeing a lot of these pastors, a lot of things that they have been done behind closed doors, whether or not, you know, they messing around with underage children, they having multiple women in the church, and they having outside kids. Like, I don't put nothing past a pastor, because a lot of them are hypocrites. Y'all better start fact-checking these pastors. Don't just go about, oh, my pastor said this. Pastor, pastor said this. And some of y'all don't even pick up the Bible until it's time for y'all to go to church on Sundays. Y'all better start checking in who y'all pastor is and start doing some background checks on them. Because a lot of them ain't right. Majority of them ain't right whatsoever. And proof is in the pudding. Proof is in the pudding because a lot of these pastors are DMing the females while, and while their wives is right there. A lot of them are looking at nasty videos. A lot of them are messing with underage children. And it's sad that you're supposed to be a leader of your congregation, a leader, period. A leader in the community and people are coming to you for leadership and you supposed to be over them and y'all out here doing the foolishness that y'all are doing and the most high is not pleased whatsoever and some of the biggest hypocrites are the ones that's in church you guys after that particular situation I stopped going to church I lost all faith. I lost it all. I really did because I no longer believe in going to church. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. Don't get me wrong about that. But I didn't I no longer felt comfortable going to church. And many, 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 many years later. Now I was still close to his wife and you know. The children, my, which was my nieces and nephews. I was still close to them. And his wife had reached out to me. She said that he wrote a letter to her and me apologizing. I was like, apologizing for what? I told her, I said, I don't want to hear nothing he got to say. But he's, because, let me back that up. So word got out for what he did, but he lied to the church and said that I made the pass out of him said look at him like why would I want to look at him well number one your breath always stink you dress crazy you dress like you played a part of character on Little House on the Prairie like why would I want to talk to you you're married you're not even my type you messed up in the mind so <clears throat> after that happened I was praying, and I was asking God, I was like, it's crazy that a lot of these pastors is out here doing that, and I had a dream about that pastor. I had a dream about him. How he looked, he looked homely, but in the dream, he looked like he was worldly, like his whole appearance changed. His hair was very nappy, but in the dream, his hair was, his hair was very like curly, nice looking. <clears throat> right after that had that dream he lost his mind mentally he was mentally gone he had to be put in a mental hospital the most high let me see that in, in front of my, my own eyes witness all of that he was mentally gone and still to this day he is mentally gone but the foolishness that I found out last week is that he's still a pastor in the same church I was like huh where they do that at? Like, you still mentally gone? You still out here? Still doing foolishness and they, they still got him in the pulpit? I almost lost my cool. But, 
years later after that happened, I said, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to forgive, but I'm never going to forget. So I forgave. I moved on with my life. I didn't tell him I forgive him. I said, Lord, I'm just going to keep, I'm not going to keep holding this burden in my heart. I'm going to forgive and I'm going to move on. And that was that. But, like I said, um, another content creator, she basically let us know that, you know, she was dealing with that. Like, a uh, pastor came DM and messaged her. And I was like, you know what? And that, my story that I went through, I said, you know what? I'm going to do a story time on that. What I personally experienced. And I was like, that this is just, it's crazy. It's crazy that we see these pastors doing that. And a lot of us You'll be so quick to be like, that's my pastor. We still going to forgive him. We, we still going to let him be the pastor. Meanwhile, he taking y'all money. Y'all pastor live in luxury, driving luxury cars, taking vacations and taking and pay, keeping his family together. Family look nice. Meanwhile, there's so many people in the congregation losing their houses, losing their jobs, losing their cars, barely have food, barely can pay their bills. While your pastor sitting and looking luxury. Living luxury. Like I said, y'all better stop fact checking these pastors. Don't just believe what pastors say. You better learn God for yourself and learn the truth and read your own Bible for what it is. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Because a lot of these pastors out here living foul and they being exposed for who they really are. And I be seeing so many videos on YouTube, so many videos on social media platforms, regardless of which one it is, how these pastors are doing. But some of y'all, y'all be like, oh, that's my pastor. My pastor can't do no wrong. Your pastor, your pastor is a human being just like you. Your pastor make mistakes just like you make mistakes. But the most high is going to hold them more accountable for their action because they claim that they are a pastor. The Bible says, woe unto the pastor that scatter my sheep. Woe means death. So y'all need to take heed. Okay, I'm pretty sure there are some of y'all that may have experienced church hurt. And you may have experienced a pastor making a pass. You may even seen some things. I don't seen a whole lot in church. Ever since I was young up until the day I left my last church, I seen a whole lot of foolishness in the church. And a lot of them was hiding behind the pulpit. But I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and if you do, make sure you thumbs up this video. And leave me some comments. Let me know, y'all. Let's get this, this topic popping. Let's run it up, you guys. Let me know in the comment section if you have experienced this, if you know someone that may have experienced this. Let's talk about it, okay? Until the next time, love on yourself and love the ones that's close to you. All right? Love y'all. See y'all on the next video. Peace.